And welcome to Build. We are live from London with the cast of Everybody's Talking About Jamie, John McCree, Lucy Shorthouse and Mina Anwar. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below or tweet us at Build Series London and we'll ask as many as we can. But first, Jamie, Lucy, Mina, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> John, you play Jamie. It looks like there are a lot of fans here today, but for anyone who's tuning in and hasn't watched the musical, can you just tell us a bit about who Jamie is and what the musical is about? Yeah, um, it's a musical based on a BBC Three documentary called uh, Jamie, Drag Queen at 16, and it is a show about... Ultimately, it's about a 16-year-old boy from Sheffield who decides that he wants to be a drag queen and the way he sort of decides to tell everybody that is to, to go to his school prom, the end of year prom, in a dress. And it's sort of how his community and his family and his friends sort of respond to that or, you know, how they deal with that. Some negative, some positive. He's got a lot of support, but obviously, like a lot of people, um, like a lot of things in life, there's, not, there's some people that don't always see eye to eye with his way. So it's sort of, we follow his journey over a sort of two months. Fantastic. Let's have a quick look at a clip from the show. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Mina, Hello. you play Ray. Tell us a bit more about your character. Well, Ray is um, uh, Margaret, who is uh, Jamie's mom. She, Ray is her best friend and lives down the road. And she's a great support to not only to Margaret, but to Jamie through his journey that we see when we meet him in the play. He's in this kind of turmoil of trying to find out who he is and what he, how he kind of projects his identity into the community. And Ray's always there, so she's not, she's a, she, she's a support. She watches f out for him, admonishes him when she thinks he's going too far. And, and she's also a support for Margaret because she's, it's not only she's seeing what's happening to, to Jamie, but also what's happening to Margaret and tries to be a kind of conduit, I suppose, between the two of them and just allow them to be themselves without putting, listening to them, not putting any pressure on them, not judging them. And it's a wonderful part to play. And she's uplifting, she's happy, she tries to make everyone laugh, and she tries to bring some kind of semblance of normality, I suppose, within the, what we see in the show when we meet them together. And I saw on Twitter that um, Jamie and his mum came along to the show again this week. Um, what are they like in real life, and what's your relationship like with them? Um, so they've been quite um, involved in um, the, the attended read-throughs and things like that, and um, it's just lovely to see their response as well. They get quite emotional at certain points. But when... Um, I think you know a bit more about this. Um, so when this, uh, they decided to kind of make a musical out of the documentary, they kind of didn't consult them, did they, um, until a bit later, and then we kind of found some weird parallels between their life that wasn't featured in the documentary and our musical. Um, so actually they have quite a poignant, uh, touching response to it. And um, it's just lovely to see that, you know, they'll come back again and again to watch it and support the show as well. And it's lovely because if, if we're outside on the stage door and our fans, I must say, are amazing and gracious and wonderful and very supportive. But if they're standing there and I'll go, oh, there's, there's Jamie. No, it's not. I said, no, what I mean is that's real Jamie. <laughs> and they go, oh, my God. And they, and they always have people, and they're so lovely. And Margaret was here the other day. And, and they go and crowd on them and hug them. And it's just it's wonderful to have them around. And, John, what's your relationship like with the real Jamie? Yeah, um, we are... We, it's strange playing a real person. Um, and, but luckily, sort of, I did, we did the majority of the sort of work on the characters before I'd even met him. So I didn't really, I didn't really feel too much pressure. Um, and he's a lovely young chap, and um, we sort of, you know, the the musical is is what what connects us. So um, I only see him through that really. But he's really sweet, and so is his mum. And Lucy, you play Pretty, Jamie's best friend, and there's so many moments in the show that really like tug on the heartstrings, and I cried at least three times. <laughs> um, and I just wondered why you think so many people connect with the show. Um, I think it's just got that universal truth of wanting to um, wanting to be your authentic self. And I think you know it might you might see the premise of the show and go, oh, well, I don't know anything about drag queens or I don't want to go to school prom in a dress, but everyone's got that little hurdle that they want to get over um, to become who they are, their, their true self. And I think everyone can connect to that. And um, 
I think whether it's Jamie Connect to or or Pretty kind of realizing um, her dreams at the end as well. I think it's something that everyone can kind of relate to, and it's very cur it's a very current show, and I do, I do think it has you know social and political resonance. It doesn't try to, but I just think it, it has it has that quality. Um, so I think people do relate to it in um, a lot of ways, whether it's on an emotional level or they. Um, kind of champion the, the message of it, which is about acceptance and celebrating diversity and things like that. Great. And your character, she's Muslim, she's arguably quite feminist, she's studious, she's not your typical West End lead female. How did it feel to make your West End debut in such an amazing role? Um, it feels really important as well, and I feel like we're at a kind of, um, there's a real paradigm shift in terms of representation and visibility in the industry anyway so um, it felt really great to kind of be a part of that and um, and she's a character who just happens to be Muslim she's not you know and um, she's very fully formed she's not like a token character it doesn't feel like a gimmick in any way and I think that was really important for me to for me to take on that character is that it didn't feel like a gimmick she's um, just a fully formed beautiful character and to see so many other people relate to her as well is is it's fantastic such a joy she's lovely to play yeah, and speaking of which, the show has some weighty topics, um, homosexuality, gender, religion. Why do you think this really is a show um, for 2018? Mm, that's a very... It's quite a deep, deep and a broad question, that, because I think what we're trying to do is... is first, that we're not representing everybody. We're doing a unique story that came and is about somebody's real life. And I just think that you could take this, this story and this community and you can extrapolate it and put it into anywhere in the world, that anywhere there's a community like this. I mean, I grew up in a community where there's the, a friend who's supportive or people are going through their struggles. And I love that banging, by the way. That's a really interesting <laughs> banging. That's, a, that's not me. That's the hammer outside. Um, and so you, what's nice is that you're playing... We're, we're trying to create an, a, a real story about real people and about real community. And I think that's what's lovely, is doing this inside the West End, because I think it's quite unique in doing something that's so, such an intimate story inside this massive, what I call this massive kind of vehicle, which is all these kind of West End shows around us. And this is, is, a, is a tale of a young boy inside a community that actually exists anywhere. And I think you could take this, you could put it into lots and lots of languages, lots and lots of communities, and it's relevant to a lot of people. And talking about the diversity issue, I think what's nice is that there's people on stage. I mean, we're, we're on stage together, and yet we don't, you don't always have to carry the politics and carry the gender or talk about your religion or, or talk about your culture. You can just create a human experience as an actor, and that's always what I've tried to do is maintain that we're actors who try to put on it the human life on the stage. And, and I think that's what this show does beautifully, and apart from the music and everything being amazing. But that's the heart of it. And before... Oh, sorry, Lisa. No, I, I also think it's very hopeful as well. We've had a lot of responses from, you know, just getting some fan letters and stuff and saying how, you know, this has encouraged me to... This year I'm going to, like, had one who said I saw the show on New Year's Eve and it's encouraged me this next year to kind of be my true self and to, and to not be afraid of who I am. And I think that hopeful message translates across the board. And we are at kind of a weird divisive time maybe in the world and I think it's nice that you know at the end of the show we really bring people together in this kind of shared communion and uh, it just, I know it just feels really hopeful doesn't it yeah absolutely and before I forget to mention huge congratulations are in order you've just won three what's on stage awards including best new musical and one especially for you John and you've been nominated for five Olivia awards that's fantastic <laughs> applause <laughs> How does that feel? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit crazy. Um, y you get asked a lot how it feels, and the only way I can sort of describe it is... <laughs> you know, it's hard to put it into words, and I try not to think about it too much because I think it can ultimately just cloud the story we're telling because it's, so, it's such a far cry away from the story we're telling, that sort of glamorous, award-winning thing um but um yeah it's lovely and it's just it's a great um it's lovely to be recognized as a show and if it means we get to keep telling the story to more and more people i mean that's what's most important is that we're reaching the masses hopefully because at the end i think at, and you're saying about it clouding things because like we've got two shows today 
And what's important is that we tell our tale to the best of our ability every single time we have an audience, because that is our responsibility as well as having those things are lovely, but it means that we get more people in and then we have to do our show every single time, start from scratch, get to the end, and then people go, we have a, a duty of care to make sure that our tale is, is as strongly as people see it and have, have awarded us for it. That's, that's a, a great responsibility and an honor. And you're obviously like super busy doing loads of shows. Have you had a chance to check out the competition for the Olivia Awards? <laughs> Have you seen Hamilton? I, no. no, I've We're seen Hamilton. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I just it's very controversial isn't it, talking about other things. I think everyone is is whatever people are seeing in different shows and and they're uh, putting them forward for things. They're very different. What is interesting right now in musical theatre, especially in the West End, I think, is that all of these shows are so different. You're not getting like three or four shows, musicals, that are in the similar kind of traditional vein. They're really current and fresh, and ours is different from Hamilton, Hamilton's different from Girl from the North Country, and I've seen them. And you go in and you come out of them with completely different ways of experiencing what is traditionally a musical theatre. And that, to me, is exciting to, to honour them all and respect everybody's work because it's, it's fabulous, fabulous work. It's an exciting time to be alive when we're up against Hamilton or Girl from the North Country. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, some musicals just have one or two show-stopping numbers, but I think you'd probably agree, thanks to the amazing work of Dan Gillespie Sells, like the, the album is like an album, and there are so many amazing songs. Do each of you have a favourite song? Yes. My favourite <laughs> song, my favourite song is um, It Means Beautiful which is sung by Lucy Shorthouse every night. And I get to, uh, I, get to uh, I get to sit there and just listen to it. And I do get sort of transported to a whole other place. And it's like a lullaby. It's really gorgeous. And um, what's interesting is that Dan sort of wrote every character having their own genre of music. And it's sort of reflective in the music that they, that character would listen to. So my, m Jamie's music is sort of very percussive. It's sort of Michael Jackson, a bit Bruno Mars. It's very current. Yours is sort of more... Like, we've said like Corinne Bailey Ray, kind of a bit more acoustic-y. Um, but my favorite song is, I would always say this, Wall in My Head. Because um, I just think the, lyri the lyrics just really tell that story of just having this, you know, wall in your head. Um, and I remember, so I was involved in the second workshop of the, the production, and it was the first time I ever heard John really sing. And I just, I always remember that feeling of going, oh my God, and I just saw the character. Um, so it always just takes me back to that special moment. Uh, oh, I don't know, there's a few. I woke up, I wake up every day singing different ones. So this morning actually was beautiful. That was in my head. Sometimes it's a work of art because it's so extraordinary piece of music. And the, it's, it's amazing how, I mean, and, and Tom McRae, the, the lyrics, sometimes it's just the nature of what's inside songs. But the first, I must say that the first time I heard John sing Ugly in this world, and it's a new song that came for the West End, was as, astonishing, it's astounding because it was just, it just came out of you. And so, and that's, in a way, it was written in the second half for, to see in really deeply inside what he's, Jamie's been hiding through the whole show. And for that to come out, apart from John's ridiculous vocals, it, it's, it was, it's astonishingly brilliant, that one. And also, he's my boy as well. Josie just does a master class every night in acting through song, it's just... Uh, they're, they're, all, they're all great, yeah. And also, so my dad at the weekend, I was like, I don't even know it. Don't, I was like, what are you singing? <laughs> and he was singing, don't even know it. And I was like, yeah, like, it's got through to my dad. Like, this is a fee. Like, we've got somewhere. This is amazing. And then you get odd lyrics that stick in your head that you don't really want to be singing around the, the, <laughs> the shopping centre. Like what? Just stick in your head that you think, why am I singing that? That's not right. <laughs> And you've spoken about like the amazing fans. Some of them are here today. Hello. Um, <laughs> um, what do you really hope um, people take away when they come and see the show? Mina? <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> I'll start. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean many different... Uh, depending on what generation you are as well, because we have a lot of, of kids come who maybe... We had... Uh, and it's very individual what people take. We had a lad the other week who'd 
who'd been experiencing bullying at school, and he was uh, trying to negotiate that for himself, and his, and his mum was trying to work that out. But actually, she brought him to the show, and then after the show, he went, all oh, right, no, I feel all right. I can do that. I can, I can deal with that. And there's something that happened between him being at school and watching our show that gave him some courage, I think. I think my thing, what I would say about the show is that whoever you want to be and whatever that is in your life, hopefully the show will encourage you to have the courage to stand in your own power Whatever that is, whatever it means, it doesn't have to take on any guise of what anybody else's uh, impression of what that is in the world. Just, and you'll always feel fear, but f for me, fear plus action is a, means a, having a courageous life. And I think that's what this show means to me. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I also think um, acceptance of others is really important in our story because there are some people that do stand in their own truth very well and sort of perhaps don't have a, the greater perspective on other people. And the grace to yeah. allow those people to exist together. Exactly, and I think what our show does brilliantly is it sort of identifies the individual behind something um, quite niche, like wanting to be a drag queen or being homosexual or being a Muslim. What we do is we show you that one person who is ultimately only a human being yeah and it sort of removes the stigma of whatever it is that you think may exist. And we are all just sort of human beings trying to interact with each other. And I think that's just such a beautiful thing. And we've just had um, a couple of questions come through from people watching. Um, Caroline says, what musical theatre character would you love to play? Lucy. Um, it's a bit of a cheesy one, but Maria von Trapp, just because I grew up. <laughs> But like a spicy updated version, but because I, I grew up watching the sound of music every single day, like my mum would put it on and she'd get all her jobs so done and I'd just long. be, I know, but I'd just literally be transfixed. And so it's just, just as in a personal guilty pleasure of mine, it would be to play Maria Vandra. And John, can anything top Jamie? <laughs> I don't know yet, maybe. Maybe it's not, I mean, I feel like whatever I want to do next has possibly not been written yet. That's really lovely to create. I've been so yeah. spoiled with this role, as we all have, mm -hmm. sort of creating a role and there not being a template for it, that um, I'm, <laughs> it's gonna be a far fall, whatever happens <laughs> next, isn't it? Um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure. Mina? Oh, I don't know, I've, oh God, I grew up watching Judy Garland and listening to lots of things. But I think that's what's exciting is to, to have the honor of creating brand new roles. Um, and then everybody else comes and, and sees your kind of way that you've done it, and then they go ahead and do whatever. But to have that first kernel of creativity within a musical theatre is amazing. But I always wanted to play Calamity Jane when I was little, so maybe, I don't know, maybe. And Jasmine on Twitter says, do you have any rituals you do before going on stage? John. Uh, yes, I am... Um I like to listen to one song specifically um, every night before I go on stage because it sort of it does wonderful things in sort of taking me to a place. Not uh, it's not about really um, becoming Jamie. It's more about sort of it's reminiscent of it holds a lot of memories for the very first workshop we did back in 2014 of the show. So it sort of reminds me of that part of my journey where it all started. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I listened to A Song For You by Donny Hathaway bef before um, I go on stage. What about you guys? I was going to say, and then you go, and here's you singing it. <laughs> no. uh, for me, I have certain things. So I've, I've said this a lot on... Uh, I, uh, whenever I create characters. I've been an actress for 27 years now, so whenever I create characters, I, I always choose a perfume because a um, sense of smell always brings me straight into who they are. So I might, then that immediately leaves the outside world and I can get into character. So me putting my perfume on is the bit that, that, that completely centers me. And I have lots of other things, rituals I do, but uh, I'm not going to share them. <laughs> But yeah, that's the main thing. I like that, though. So every different character has a different scent. And when I smell them years later, I go, ah, oh, I can remember where I am. And okay. Yeah, it's amazing. 
Um, I think part of my ritual is putting on the hijab and the glasses, and um, I don't wear much... I'll have to take my makeup off, actually, for, for the shows today, and I find that part of the, the kind of ritual as well is just especially scrubbing my eyes and just getting really kind of clean. Um, it just makes me feel like her, just simple and... Yeah, just simple and open, yeah. And Mina, as you just mentioned, you've had a long career with lots of drama and film, Shameless, The Thin Blue Line, to, let, to name a few. Um, how does being on stage compare to TV and film? Uh, uh, well, I've always been on... I, I trained in musical theatre and acting, and the first five years of my career, I did brand new writing, I did big musicals, I went on a big rock and roll bus around Europe on doing a Hair, the musical... And there's lots of things that I've done, and TV is part of it in film. And I love all... I am very lucky to say that I am still here after 27 years, be, cr being able to be amongst people who... I've been on the stage longer than they've been alive. That's... It's, it's, it's amazing. And, and I feel a responsibility to be able to push what I consider to be some, uh, the diversity issue, which is being an actress, standing in my power and being able to let my skills speak for themselves as opposed to my culture. And I am more than lucky with my career and I'm happy to be here. I love it. I just love them all. And, John, I've been dying to ask you, how did you learn to walk in those huge red heels? Um, I just didn't really ever take them off mm. during rehearsals. Um, yeah... I mean, I always... Uh, people think I'm sort of talking it down, but I'm not. There there is a really big platform, so I'm very safe. And I'm doing the same movements every night, so it's not... I think if you were to ask me to walk around this room and do something on a new surface, it would be quite strange. But, um, I, uh, yeah, lots of practice, lots of blisters, lots of ripped toenails, sorry. You see, that, every night I watch you get on that wall, on the wall of desks... And, but the, the, the wall of the, death. Yeah, the wall <laughs> of death. <laughs> Friday slip. But what's interesting is you get sitting down because you are extra on. Uh, well, if you're sitting on the front row and you've got you standing on the wall, and then you sit down on the thing, and I watch the, the, uh, the deftness at which you move off there, and I couldn't do it. I think it's extraordinary. And so it isn't so like much a small. Fun. Uh, it's lots of fun. No mean feet. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel. Um, in January, we heard that the run has been extended into October. Are there any rumours of it being extended again? Yeah, we're extending until 2054. <laughs> um, so we've so got a great excuse now. Uh, no, for the moment, it's just it's just October. But oh. let's hope that we can keep on going yeah. and keep telling the story. And you know. And we would do our job, and then we hopefully, and people just come and watch it. You know, we want the widest. What's interesting is having the widest possible diversity on the stage, is having the widest possible diversity in the theatre. Because this show is so relevant to everybody. And I just, my plea would be come and see it. Come and see it. You know, you can get some day seats. I know sometimes the West End can be very expensive, but we are sitting right in the middle. and... And we're quite cheap, actually, relatively cheap inside the West End. And it's, and it's such a great show. You could bring your, you come with your family, come with your mates, come with your grandma. We had four generations of people the other day. A grandma, a mom, and the daughter, and her daughter all came together to see a show like this. It's just come and watch it, and then hopefully... And we exist a lot through word of mouth as well. It's amazing. Yeah, amazing. considering the show is called Everybody's Talking About Jamie, I feel like that's kind of... Yeah, I think that's how we've kind of garnered some momentum and that's how we got from Sheffield to, to London is because people just kept talking about it. So, um, and what like you said, it's so rewarding seeing the audiences at the end and they're such, you know, so diverse, different ages, different colours, different creeds, all coming together. Um, it's, re it's really special. It's really special. And then they all get up and have a dance at the end. That's really lovely. It's exciting. I, I imagine it's standing ovation every night. It certainly was when I came along, and I can't imagine anything else. Um, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. It's been amazing having you on Build today. Everybody's Talking About Jamie is at the Apollo Theatre in London until October, hopefully longer. Please give it up for John, Lucy and Mina.